was a boy who lived in Bethlehem with his father, Jesse, and his older brother. A man named Samuel was told by the Lord to go to Bethlehem and find a man named Jesse for the God told Samuel that one of Jesse's sons was going to be the king of Israel. When he got to Bethlehem, Samuel assumed that because he was the biggest and strongest and oldest, Eliab would be the chosen king. Lord, surely this man will be the next king of Israel, or one of his older brothers. The Lord does not look at things like people do. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Samuel asked about each one of his brothers except for the youngest. Each day, each time the Lord told him that this was not the next king of Israel, finally he asked about the youngest brother, a boy named David. Rise and anoint him. This is the next king of Israel. Samuel did as he was told, and from that day on, the spirit of the Lord was with David. During this time, Israel was fighting against the Philistines, while David's brothers served him salt and wine. David stayed at home with his father and tended the sheep. He would play his harp from time to time for the king, and he would take supplies and food for his brothers. David, your brothers have been gone for quite some time. Go to the valley of Elon, bring them some bread and cheese, and then come back and tell me how they're doing. Yes, Father. When David arrived, he saw, he saw Saul's army camp on the top of one big hill, and the Philistines' army camp on another, with the valley between them. David began searching for his brothers, when all of a sudden he heard, it, he heard a booming voice from across the valley. Hey, Israelites! <laughs> Choose a man to come fight me. If you win, we'll be your servants. If I win, you will serve me. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? That's Goliath. Every day for 40 days he's come out and talked to us, trying to get someone to fight him. Everyone is afraid of him. He's huge, over nine feet tall. Our men won't stand a chance. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid of him. He may be a giant, but we've got God on our side. What are you doing here, you little show-off? Go home where you belong. Leave the fighting to the men. That's the problem. All the men I see are too scared to fight blood. I'll go tell King Saul that I'll fight the giant. So David made his way to King Saul's tent. No, sir. I want to fight your life. You can't fight him. You're a little kid. He's been a warrior for many years. I'm a servant that has watched sheep, and I've had to fight off lions and bears from taking my sheep. The Lord was with me when I fought off lions and bears. He will be with me when I fight the giant. Very well, then. But take my armor and my sword, and may the Lord be with you. The, uh, the armor and sword were way too big and buckly, so David took them off and went to a small stream and chose five smooth stones. He took the stones and his slingshot and marched toward the life. Ha, ha, ha! Are you serious? You're going to send this tiny child to fight mighty Goliath? I defy your God. You come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of God, the God of the army of the Israelites. As the lion went toward David, David charged forward, put a stone into his sling at 